Well, hello class. This is Tom Simmons, and this is the first video lecture that accompanies uh, my course, my online course in sports and stadium economics. And this is just an introductory video that's going to go over what this course is going to cover, and some of the some of the subjects, some of the topics that I expect that we're all going to be investigating together. You may know sports uh, as something enjoyable, something that you played either as a child or maybe even as an adult, uh, something you like to watch on TV, something that maybe you simply have, a, have an interest in. Um, but sports is a business, and it has been a business for a very, very long time. It's not just a source of entertainment. And if you are watching TV on, uh, you, are you watching a sports event on TV, you know it's a business because it's the business element that gets it on that station. If you have bought a, uh, a cap or a shirt or something with your favorite team uh, with the logo on it, you know sports is a business. If you've even gone to a stadium, paid a parking fee, uh, bought a ticket, bought a hot dog, you know that sports is a business. And we're going to be looking at this from a micro, largely microeconomic perspective. Uh, you don't have to have macro or microeconomics as a background to take this course. And you don't need to be a sports fanatic and know every statistic and every player on every team to take this course. But when I say we're going to look at it from a microeconomic perspective, what I'm really saying is we're looking at individual teams, individual leagues, individual consumers, and how they function together in the marketplace. I've divided this uh, this course into three major sections. The first section deals with the business environment of the sports industry. Uh, it's it's very easy to look at um, the fast food industry and point out what the industry is and then identify who the competitors, who the firms within that industry are. Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, Sonic, uh, whoever else you may come up with. Sports is a lot, a lot different, a lot more complicated, and a lot larger because of all the different ways in which competition comes into play at so many different levels. So the first few weeks we're going to be looking at this business environment. And we, we have to understand that every business has to change, has to grow, has to evolve with the culture and the community around it. You know, once upon a time there was a company called Underwood that made the vast majority of typewriters across the United States. And they were good at what they did. Uh, but at some point, even they, as good a typewriter as they made, even they went under because technology and culture and globalization and time passed them by and people were looking for something new and I am willing to bet that not one of you is attempting to take this course using an Underwood typewriter to type your papers because we've all gone the way of the internet we've all gone the way of computers and keyboards and we've even gone into handheld devices so it's important for us to look at the place uh, that sports occupies within a business environment and what changes are taking place that are reflected in sports as it also changes and grows and evolves with, those, with that time and technology and with evolving cultures. The middle of the course is really the heart and soul of, a, of what, um, what interests me and what may interest a lot of you, and that in that part of the course we're going to be looking at uh, the differences between and amongst the five big professional sports leagues and when I say the five big leagues I'm talking about the United States and I'm talking about Major League Baseball the National Basketball Association the National Football League the National Hockey League and Major League Soccer uh, and many writers and even texts up until this point will talk about the big four sports and they leave out soccer. Well, times are such that you cannot do that anymore. Statistics, attendance, and dollars prove 
that Major League Soccer has made it as one of the big five professional sports in the United States. So we're going to look at all five leagues, how they're structured, how they're set up, what makes one league structured different than another. And these have very practical implications. It wasn't that long ago when the NBA was looking for a way to get rid of Donald Sterling as the owner of the Clippers. Well, depending on how the league is structured, that, dep that will tell you who can make those decisions, who can force an owner out. Uh, how do we decide where an expansion team is going? How do we decide um, whether uh, one team can move from one city to another? The structure of that league has a very strong effect on what that league looks like and on the economic and business realities of that league in many, many different areas. So during the middle of this course, we're going to look at, at, at two different topics each week. First, we will examine the structure of a particular league in depth, each one of the five leagues. But we will also look at specific issues that cross over leagues. So we might look at uh, issues such as uh, salary caps, free agency status, labor uh, contracts, antitrust statutes as they apply to the sports team, uh, draft pick processes and how, how they are different among the leagues, but the each, each of the leagues has them. Towards the end of the course, we will be looking at what I call stadiums and systems. Where are new stadiums built? How are they built? Who's paying for them? Is this a taxpayer issue? Is this a team issue? Is it a league issue? Who gets to decide where they go? What are the specific stadium deals looking like as we move forward? And we'll look at a few case studies. Uh, we'll also look at how these teams, in terms of systems, are getting new players. What do their farm teams look like? What do the minor leagues look like underneath them? And what are the relationships that these major league teams have with these minor league teams? Uh, because, again, they're different from league to league. So, a couple of things to keep in mind as we begin this course. First, I don't assign a particular text. I, quite frankly, I've never found a single text that works great for all the topics we're going to cover in this course. Um, so rather than assign you one text or multiple texts, what I do ask you to do is to go online uh, and get a GCC library card. Uh, and I realize many of you may not even be in this area, but you don't need to be in the area to get a library card from the GCC library. You can do it all online, they give you a number, and you can use that number. And the reason you need that number is because I will be assigning specific chapters from specific books that you can obtain in electronic form simply by going through the GCC eBrary. It also means if you'd like to do some research, uh, you, can, you can use that um, system as well. So it brings an awful lot into your house that you may not have readily available to you. I also want you to take a look at my blog, uh, and I've included the link in our Moodle platform. Uh, Tully's sports blog is part of a family of blogs that I run that at this point has over 300,000 hits. Uh, everything we post cross-posts to Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, StumbleUpon, uh, a lot of different places. Um, and during the course of this semester, I'm going to be asking you to write a number of blog articles. And don't worry, because I will, I will uh, help you through that. I will edit them. I will, I will make sure that it, it looks good and that you shine. And you will post to this sports blog. Uh, so really, by the end of the course, you'll even be able to say that you uh, were a contributor a published contributor to a sports blog, and that's something you can pop on your resume. So take a look at that blog. Also keep in mind, you might as well start thinking about it now, that you will have a major project due worth 20% of your grade by the end of the semester. And that project really is one that you will design and you will come up with, and it can be almost any topic 
that joins the business or economic nature of sports with your passion for sports. As long as I approve it, you're off and running. And that can be uh, submitted in almost any format. PowerPoint, video, another blog post. If it is and it's good, I'll add it to my blog. Um, uh, even a paper. Whatever works best for you. But start thinking now about what interests you most about sports and the business or the money of sports. And you can begin thinking about what you might want to do that project on. Finally, the majority of your grade, 50% of your grade, um, will be based on the discussion forums that uh, we will post on our Moodle site. And that really takes the place of classroom conversation. And I want you to participate fully and extensively in these discussion forums. Because this is where you'll interact with your, your classmates, it takes the place of conversation, and it's where you will really be thinking aloud as you write through the issues that we're going to look at uh, in, the, in the course of this semester. I want you to keep in mind that even if you're you know, a real sports fan, uh, not everyone's got the same sports background or knowledge that you have. So for instance, if I was to write something uh, such as Jack McInerney really earned his money last night, did you see that? That doesn't help anybody if you don't know who Jack McInerney is. He's a forward for the, uh, the Montreal Impact in Major League Soccer. So it really helps to remember that not everyone knows all the players, all the teams, all the stats like you do. So when you write, I want you to, to specifically say something such as Jack McInerney, parentheses, MLS, Montreal Impact, forward, close parentheses, so that everyone feels like they're a part of what's going on in the class and no one feels left out because they, they never heard of that player. Also remember that even though this college is located in Greenfield, Massachusetts, not all of us are New Englanders. Not all of us are going to school in the Greenfield area. Um, I often have many students who are in the military who are stationed all around the world. I've had students participate in these classes living in Okinawa, uh, Hawaii, South Africa, Morocco, Jordan, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, members of the military deployed around the world. So it's really important to be, be careful with your language and what seems funny to you may not translate into a different culture. Uh, remember, we're, just because, again, we're in Greenfield, it doesn't mean that everyone is a Boston Red Sox, Boston Bruins, Boston uh, Celtics, uh, New England Patriots, New England Revolution fan. Um, some of us, myself included, were born elsewhere. I'm a New Yorker, born and bred. Uh, and so we have, uh, we have uh, teams that are near and dear to our hearts that are, are not located in the Boston orbit. And I'm actually hoping that some of you bring some of that diversity to this particular classroom. So there will be um, there'll be a lot of discussion in the forums, uh, a lot of small homework assignments to make sure that you've read the material, you understand it, uh, a few research assignments, number of blog posts, and then this large project. That basically is an overview of this course. And as I said, we're going to look at all five of the leagues, the development of antitrust, especially as it relates to baseball, uh, the, the, uh, the early days. We'll spend a little, little extra time on baseball because that was the first national organized sport in the United States. So we will look at how baseball fit into the culture of the late 1800s and the early 1900s and why it made sense as an American sport at that time. We will look at ticket prices. We will look at why stadiums are being built the way they're being built today with more corporate boxes uh, and more suites and uh, many uh, football stadiums now have personal seat licenses. What's that all about? Uh, why do so many sports teams own networks now? Or why do single owners own both a team and a cable sports network? How is it that, um, that baseball teams need to be in major media markets, like New, like New York, 
but football franchises can survive in in tiny towns like Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, why did the Expos move to Washington D.C. and what was necessary to allow that to happen when they transferred from being the uh, the Expos to the Nationals? Was it easier or harder for the Nordiques to move from Quebec City, Quebec into Colorado? Will David Beckham ever have a stadium anywhere in Florida? All of these issues are, are surrounded by questions of microeconomics and the business of sports and the structure of the leagues. Uh, who makes the decisions, how those decisions are made, and legally who's got the right to do what, because they are different from league to league. So that's just a quick overview of this course. Um, I recommend that you go over the uh, the first lesson in the site, which suggests to you the different documents you'll need to download, uh, different things you'll need to do on your computer and on, on the web to make sure everything is functioning, so that when I post the first actual academic lesson, you're ready to hit the ground running. If you have any problems, uh, make sure you, you email me. Um, you'll learn a lot about me as we go through this course. I am a soccer fan first and foremost with baseball as a close second. Uh, yes, I'm a New Yorker, but not all my favorite teams are in New York. Um, I uh, was a personal trainer, uh, certified by the International Fitness Professionals Association, the IFPA, and worked at weight rooms for the YMCA and right here at GCC. So uh, I enjoy sports. I don't play them all very well. The ones I do play, I still enjoy playing. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy this semester. And, uh, and, and this course will open your eyes to a lot of things that may not have been apparent when, uh, when you are simply playing or watching those sports on TV. That's it for this video. Most of the videos will probably run between 15 and 25 minutes. Uh, so when you when you get ready to go to your lessons, that's the amount of time you should set aside just for watching the video. And again, any questions, get a hold of me. Uh, I'm very easy to find uh, online. I answer most of my emails within 24 hours or less. I live online. And uh, I'm looking forward to the semester with you.